do you think you'll be able to detect a real versus machine AI slash robot within a hundred years from now? I'm willing to bet you won't be able to distinguish which ones are human and which one are AI. And I would never have said that to you two years ago. It is getting pretty wild as to what is happening in the research. So I want to share with you exactly what's going on right now, what is already indistinguishable and what they have left to crack for the code and what this means for you and I. All right, everybody, we're back on the Cabral Concept here, episode 2869, if you want all the details and all the research. But today's going to be a pretty wild show. I'm literally breaking news here today on how AI, artificial intelligence, just changed what it means to be human. So four research studies that I think will absolutely blow your mind. You're going to want to stay tuned for these for sure. I'll give those just a little bit into the show. Here's what's already going on. This is what's already leading me down the path. And I'm going to share with you the four research studies that just came out over the last month or so. So right now, you already can't tell on text alone. So it's not just chat GPT. People talk about chat GPT for and all these different things. Fine. You, if you were having a chat bot conversation, you, you can't tell right now whether it's a human or a machine. Okay, so that's phase one, just text. Can you tell right now with a text conversation if it's a robot or a person? You can't tell. It is indistinguishable and you can even tell the robot who to act, who to model, et cetera. I'm calling it a robot, by the way, for lack of a better term. There's like literally no good way to say it. I can just say the AI, so the artificial intelligence, but you're like, well, what is the artificial intelligence? Like, I can call it the software, the program, the entity, right? So we'll just go back and forth between AI and robot, however you want to think about it, machine. But I've, I think the tables will turn towards the end of the conversation. So the next step is this. We can't tell by text. That's first. It is getting pretty good and pretty, by pretty good, I mean getting to be great at mimicking voice. So a lot of them are called deep fakes right now. You can take, you might have seen the Tom Cruise video before. The Tom Cruise video, you can just type in like Tom Cruise AI video, and you'll see a video that Tom Cruise did not create of Tom Cruise speaking that's pretty unbelievable. Now, here's the thing, though. That's not what I'm talking about in terms of um, mistaking humans for AI. What I'm saying is this, is that a average, regular, whoever it might be, individual, can you have a conversation with them? Now, that was a video that was created. That was not a conversation, right? So it's very different. So right now, you can have a conversation online with a bot, with AI, and you, you really can't determine it. You know, honestly, you can't because it, oftentimes it's better than a human. So then like with voice... Now, the voice right now they have is good, but not great. They're working on dialects. They're working on... The problem is this. This is with uh, the subtleties of being human. They're not great yet at fluidity, tone, storytelling, when to laugh, like all these different things, right? So that's still being worked on, but it's actually really good right now. You know, telemarketers back in the past, it used to be humans dialing, right? And, and making calls. And you could always tell when it was robotic. Now it's AI dials and it's much more difficult to tell, am I talking with a real person? Is this a human, right? And does it matter? We're going to get to those questions. And then, so I think that's about two years away, 18 months to two years. Now people will say it's already here. I know I've heard a lot of them. They're good, but not great. They like it. They're still distinguishable. I'm talking about indistinguishable that 10 out of 10 times you just, you're just making a guess. You don't really know. Okay. So in two to three years, I think it's going to take just a little bit longer. Then we have video. Now, are they already doing video right now? Yes. But what I'm talking about is a face to face conversation. Okay. So you are, let's say, talking with a doctor. Is it a real doctor or an AI doctor? That's what I'm talking about. So you have full conversations, not a pre-recorded video. They already do that amazingly well now. Okay. So can I have a real conversation with not a real human? And I don't know. Right? I don't know. I think that's only two to three years away. That's how crazy it is. Two to three years. That's it. And all they have to get down again is the subtleties of being human, the natural head movements, 
the natural hand movements, the rebuttals, the quick conversation without the weird pauses, the um, monotone nature of most robotic-based voices, right? They'll get that down. That's not gonna be complicated. We're talking about two to three years maximum. Think about what that does. Think about not asking questions online to a search engine like Google, but instead asking it to what looks like a human, a doctor, an attorney, a contractor, like anybody, right? Real estate agent, it's coming. So the last part, and this is part of the video that we just did, the last part is the Turing test, the true Turing test. So the Turing test can be used for any one of these. But the true one is, can you sit across from an AI and distinguish if it is human or not? Now, we're not close to that yet. We are not. Like not uh, to my knowledge, right? <laughs> to my knowledge, we're not. Uh, we've never seen anything like that. Are there robots? Are there, you know, skin, uh, exterior, exoskeletons added to it? Yes. Do they look real? No, not at all. I mean, they really don't. Like they're caricature real, like they're humanoid type, but not real, real, right? So how long will that take? I don't know, but I'll tell you. We have the Tesla bot, right? Boston Dynamics, if you've never seen the Boston Dynamic robots, you have to, it's worth checking out on YouTube. So if you're already on YouTube watching the show, I appreciate you. We appreciate you subscribing, being a member of the community. Type in Boston Dynamic robot demonstrations. I mean, they have these robots doing backflips and they've got dogs, they've got all sorts of different things. I actually got to see some of them in person just a year ago. So really, really impressive, right? But they're clearly robots. They're not there yet. Now, the feats of strength and the coordination are fantastic, but definitely not gonna fool anybody. So here's the thing. They lack fluid motion, but only temporarily, right? Like just temporarily, like how I mean, it's gonna improve. Right? It's gonna literally most likely double in performance every year. So how many, or every three years is like Moore's law, right? So how many doublings do we need in order for it to be indistinguishable? I don't know. That's not necessarily my forte, but I love to learn about it. I love to read about it. So then besides the fluidity, we then need the natural skin, the natural hair, the eyes need to be indistinguishable because the eyes give it away, right? The texture of the skin and all of those things that are uniquely human. We, we are humans, at least me, at least we have perfect, we have imperfections, right? So I have imperfections looking at someone with no imperfections. We're like, that's not a real human, right? Like there, there has to be a little something to that. So I just believe this is my opinion within a hundred years, we solve the fluid movement, the movement, we solve the skin, the hair, the nails, the texture, the subtleties in movement as well. And why do I believe that? Four research articles I wanna share with you right now. The first one, and I'm gonna link all these up at stephencabral.com slash 2869. You can head over there right now. Two of them I've already talked about on the Friday review. That's why I'm gonna give you four links here today and go deeper. Scientists are now 3D printing hair follicles in a lab. They're growing real hair in a lab on skin. This then will be able to be grown and actually then transferred over a robot. So we won't know what's inside, but we will know the outside. Now, I would say to you, well, what if the inside didn't need to be metal? We always think of everything as like from the movies, right? But what if the AI, the, the bot, doesn't need to be metal? What if it could actually be made just like us. Well, they are now printing robots with bones, ligaments, and tendons. So they are literally using human-based parts. And this just got published out of Switzerland, I believe. Uh, let's see, literally 14 days ago. I'm gonna link that up as well. The third one is brain implants may be able to communicate from thoughts alone. So it's always been believed in the metaphysical and the Vedas and everybody that humans could communicate without speaking. 
not everybody can do it. Some people are said to be able to do it. I'm not able to. I think that I have intuition sometimes because I've, I've actually done 40,000 plus one-on-one -on -one appointments. You know, so I've done a lot. Uh, so, so I have an intuition, but I can't read thoughts. I can't read people's minds. But they're already doing this. This is not sci-fi. There is now devices being implanted in people's brains that are not able, that are not only able to create a printout of an image that they're focused on, but also transfer the thoughts that they are thinking, which is pretty wild. So now, could a human power an inanimate robot? Or could this implant be a signal from one person into an actual physical entity? Pretty wild to think about. The last one is this. This, this is a great research study. The headline is what caught me the most, because I, I read a lot of research on a daily basis, but I don't go deep in every single one unless it really draws me out uh, or draws me in. This was published just 17 days ago. AI faces, so this is still online, not yet in person, but it, it will be in person. AI faces look more real than actual human face. AI faces look more real than actual human face. And this was done out of Australian National University. And when people are shown an AI face versus a human face, more people felt that the AI was a real human than the human itself. Pretty unbelievable. So then I ask you, and we start to extrapolate the data, we start to then forecast down 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 50 years from now, 100 years from now. If we're already 3D printing hair follicles, the things that make humans look a little bit more imperfect, right? Not flawless, and or pores in skin or things like that. Um, and ligaments and bones are being used. And we've got these kind of brain implant devices and they can definitely make human faces or AI faces look human. Are we going to be able to tell the difference between humans and AI? And if they are, can be made from the same exact parts what sets us apart? What makes us different than the AI? These are deep questions to begin to contemplate. Now, not everybody wants to think about that, but is it because we have consciousness? Do they have consciousness? Will they have consciousness? Is that something that only humans can have? And if so, where did the consciousness come from? Right? And so that might be even more so where we, people start to get deeper into religion. Again, I don't have all the answers. I'm not saying I do. Um, or they start to look at, well, the differentiator then is the soul or the spirit or whatever it might be. Again, I, I don't know that this is right for you or the right thoughts for you, but these are deep conversations that if we can keep our mind open and we can start to think about them now, we can have some really interesting and fascinating conversations about what it will mean to be truly human. And will there be a differentiator, as I said, 50 to 100 years from now? Hopefully, today's show is thought-provoking. Again, all of the show notes, links, research, and articles can be found at stephencabral.com slash 2869. And I would love to hear in the comments below if this was fascinating. If you'd like to hear more about artificial intelligence and how it can actually work with humans or improve humans' lives as well in the future, just leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Of course, I'll be back tomorrow on our Friday review, giving you more research every single week, my favorite book reviews, my favorite products, and much more. Take care, everybody. Have an amazing rest of the day. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.